Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lara or Lara Likes Mascara and today I'm doing a type of video that I've never done before but I've definitely seen other people do these and you probably have as well if you're in this kind of you know conscious consumerism type of community if you watch people who do project pans you've probably seen these but if you haven't i've called it an anti-haul just because that is kind of the popular name in video titles but it's basically like a roasting new makeup launches that is how i would describe it yeah so if you are the kind of person who loves scrolling through trend mood or these other you know makeup instagram accounts that talk about all of the new releases that are coming out but you don't do it because you want to buy new products you want to do it to kind of make fun or think about how ridiculous all of these new product launches is this video is for you and even if you're the kind of person who scrolls through those accounts and you're like oh my god i want everything i want everything this video might be for you too because you know let's bring a little bit of critical consciousness maybe think a bit more about what we're buying how much we're buying bring some of that to our consumerism basically what i've done is looked at the main well i think these are the main instagram pages that show the newest releases and i've selected some that i think are for whatever reason comment worthy in going through these i think there was one that i came across that i was like oh yeah i'm i'm actually interested in that i would probably buy it but for the most part doing this was not tempting for me if you on the other hand get very very tempted by new makeup releases i probably would advise you to not follow those types of pages trend mood cannot be good for your wallet or for even your makeup collection because i feel like the kind of people who follow this account seriously have massive collections and probably don't get to using up most of the products in their collection and that is the opposite of what i talk about here on my channel i love using up what i already have and trying really to not bring things into my collection or you know bring in as few things as possible but all of that sort of introduction aside welcome to this anti haul and let's talk about all of the new products that are coming out and why i will not be buying them and why you should not either yeah clap for that claps for that so i am going to be roasting like very particular makeup launches but also talking more broadly about the industry as a whole and kind of the trends i'm seeing because i think a few years ago i didn't really notice trends that were happening like i was immersed in the industry but i wasn't really thinking about the landscape as a whole i was just like oh matte lips yeah <laughs> i love matte lips not realizing that matte lips were just a trend or matte skin was just a trend or fluffy brows soap brows whatever and now now that i feel like i've been making videos and also like watching youtube for such a long time i can see that there's ebbs and flows and there's changes in makeup trends that i sort of wasn't really aware of before when i was in it for a shorter period of time basically so some of these things i have taken notes on and others i you know kind of have an idea of what i want to talk about but it's just going to be kind of free-flowing no script and the first one i want to talk about is a collab between a makeup company and a clothing company in this case i think it was done okay but i think it's been done kind of poorly in the past by other brands and as a general rule i just i don't really think it makes sense so let me show you what i'm talking about this is the new collab between kate spade and clinique and it is a set of lip glosses. So these are $28 Canadian, and there are four different packages. You know, some are stripes, some have got polka dots, which is right on brand for Kate Spade in terms of, you know, if you've, if you've seen their wallets or, or packaging before. So it's very clear that it was the packaging that was designed by Kate Spade, and I think that that's usually how it is. And, and it is limited edition. So I have a couple issues with this i think as i said as a general rule it doesn't really make sense for clothing companies to collaborate with makeup brands because these are two entirely different things right like makeup companies know how to make makeup and clothing companies know how to make clothing so at least here they're saying that you know kate spade designed the packaging and not the actual lip gloss because it would make no sense whatsoever for 
a clothing company to get involved in formulating a lip gloss because they just that that's not what they do kate spade does not make makeup as far as i'm aware i'm also thinking of a recent collaboration between elf and american eagle and that one yeah that did not make sense to me because it was basically just like a denim themed makeup launch like everything was very blue, different shades of blue. There was some lip glosses. There was like an eyeshadow palette. At least with Kate Spade, like when I look at the packaging, I can tell that it's Kate Spade. It's a very distinct look. Whereas with American Eagle, I don't really feel like they have a distinct look. And it's kind of the same across, you know, fast fashion companies. They make whatever is trendy. Now you could probably differentiate between American Eagle and say Zara because they do have different styles. But again, that's not to say that it's like a specific look. American Eagle, I guess what they're saying is they're known for denim, but you could say the same about Gap, about Levi, you know, like it just, in that one, it was basically kind of an excuse to create a partnership that to me did not make sense. Like you could just, you could create a partnership between any two companies like that. That doesn't mean that you should. It's just a clear way to try to create more income for both companies by collaborating in a way that doesn't make sense for either of them. And also like Kate Spade, again, people are fans of Kate Spade, the brand, right? Like you might want a Kate Spade lip gloss because it would go really well in your little Kate Spade clutch. But people aren't like <laughs> fawning over American Eagle brand stuff, you know? Like it is fairly affordable. It's not a very like cult product. I don't really know if there's like diehard American Eagle fans and I don't know if there's people who are going to buy the e.l.f. eyeshadow palette because they love American Eagle that much. You know what I mean? were there American Eagle fans buying that collab? I don't know. I heard about it once and I I think in an anti hell video or maybe one of Kelly Gooch's videos and that was it. Never heard about it again. And I think that that tends to be the way that these things go because they're a limited edition. You can never buy them again, but also because they aren't like makeup for the sake of makeup. They're makeup for the sake of a collaboration to make more money. It, it, it's clearly just a cash grab to me. And that's the issue I have with a lot of collaborations in general. And then thinking a little bit more about makeup companies that are creating makeup, obviously not American Eagle, but we have seen some, especially designers, create their own makeup lines. We've got Marc Jacobs, we've got Gucci, and then recently, or maybe this has existed for a while, but I just wasn't aware of it, the Hermes, makeup line. Is that how you pronounce it? Urme? Urmez? Let me show you what it looks like. I will pop a picture on the screen too because that will be easier to see, but it just... <laughs> this looks so uninspired to me. It's just like a not that standout-y shade of blush and then they pop the Urmez logo on it. Like what? At least with the Gucci blushes, I think that this is like an inspired look. I've seen a lot of people talking about these because they are gorgeous. Like the packaging is just, it's so nice. It looks super, super luxe to me. With those stars and the coloring and the shape compared to the Hermes packaging. It's just, it's not it, you know? And yeah, I'm just not really a fan of like when designers make makeup brands because it is obviously a cash grab like these companies are only creating makeup companies because they are so popular that they know they can not because they are super inspired or that it necessarily makes sense to have a makeup brand as part of the company and a lot of these i kind of find tacky in the packaging have you seen the Dior blushes? I know that these are hugely popular, especially the bright pink one, these ones, but whenever I see it, I just think it looks so like cheap and tacky. And part of that is because of the logo that is like embedded into the blush. Can you see that there? It's part of the blush itself rather than the packaging. And I think that I get a bit of the ick from this because I don't like super ostentatious over the top 
designer logos. Like I just find that tacky. I think that's kind of a new money versus old money debate. I don't even know what video I was watching recently. It was a financial diet video talking about how people who have been wealthy for like generations and generations generally don't show their wealth, whereas people who are new to money often have much more overt displays of wealth through like designer logos everywhere and flashy cars and whatnot. And I think that, yeah, this, this sort of ostentatious branding I don't personally like it. I just I just find it tacky. Same with Coach. That's another one that comes to mind when I think of like Coach wristlets or or even Louis Vuitton suitcases. I think that those look yeah, just like tacky and f fake because there's so many fake Louis Vuitton and Coach and Dior branded stuff that just use this logo. So, yeah, I don't really have particular thoughts on these new shade late launches. That's I think what all of these posts about the Dior blush are about. I just, I don't like the aesthetic of them. And I generally don't like clothing companies creating makeup companies. This is not to say that I will like never buy one of these products. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but um, yeah, I'm just generally not a fan of that. I think this is the same thing with like celebrity makeup brands. I will buy from celebrity makeup brands. I'm not like completely opposed to them, but you know, everyone everyone loves like a good underdog origin story. Yeah, and I think I would just prefer to buy from a regular makeup company rather than from an individual who, because they have amassed wealth and fame, they decided that they should make a makeup company to further <laughs> expand their empire a la, you know, Kylie Jenner. Yeah, I don't really have any concluding thoughts on that, but that's just sort of how I feel. I'm editing here and I feel like this sounds a little bit tone deaf because I realize that not every makeup company has like this amazing origin story where they persevered and no one thought they could make it and they didn't have any money. A lot of people just made makeup companies because they could like because they already had money, it was much easier for them to build an empire because of that, because they came from a place of financial privilege. So yeah, but I, I still think that like a celebrity makeup line is a little bit different and a little bit less valid. Hopefully you know what I mean. Okay, so those were all from Trend Mood. I think I want to move on to a different one now. Beauty News Official used to be one of the main Instagram accounts, but I looked on their site and it seems that they haven't posted for over a year now. So obviously I'm not gonna do those because those are not new makeup launches. Although the last one was a collaboration between Morphe and Lucky Charms, which I guess kind of leads me into my discussion of like collaborations again. And my question is like, where does it end? We've had collaborations between Elf and Chipotle. We've had Shrek collaborations. We've had American Eagle and Kate Spade collaborations. Lucky Charms. I saw this great post on Instagram a long time ago that was something like, in this century, we will see a senator come out with a makeup line. And I think that that just sums it up so well. Like. Everyone is just trying to get in on this because makeup is so hot right now. Like the industry is booming. So we're we're just gonna keep seeing these collaborations. We're just gonna see more celebrities coming out with makeup brands as they realize that this is like one of the most profitable things that you can do. It's all just a cash grab ultimately. <laughs> and uh, yeah, don't love that. So let's talk about the trend of like, big lips, basically. And we're seeing this both from a cosmetics perspective and also a makeup perspective. And what I mean by that is big lips, like lip filler, lip blush, lip flip. Like there's all of these procedures now which are very, very common and almost like expected in the beauty space. And big lips are, yeah, just kind of like what the aesthetic is these days. And along with that, we have so many different products which are meant to plump your lips or make them look bigger. This one is called, so there's a Rose Ink Lip Treatment Hydrating Balm with Squalene. So we're getting, we're getting some skincare in the lips. That's another trend, you know, putting skincare and makeup. And then there's the, is it Refi or Refi? Refi, I don't know, Lip Buff 
instantly plump, smooth, and hydrate lips. And there's pictures of these and what they do to your lips. And I just feel like when I look at the after pictures or when I see pictures of lips that are like have had filler or they are using products like this, I don't like the result, which is really interesting because I feel like I'm so inundated with trends, whether it be like clothing or makeup, that a few months after something has become a trend, even if at the very beginning I wasn't into it, <laughs> by that point I'm always into it. So I'm kind of surprised that by now I'm not like, oh, I want big lips too. Like, I like that aesthetic. I, I still don't for whatever reason. And I find with all of these refi products, they all like look very strange to me and almost like clinical, like like scientific instruments. Like this one, it looks like a like a centipede or something. Like the, the product, I gotta pop up a picture here. Um, it just, it looks so gross. I would not wanna put that on my lips. And it's the same with the brow products and the other lip things I've seen. I just look at them and I'm like, mm. I would not want to use this on me but i know that brand is super popular i just i'm not i'm not into the unnaturally big lips look I, th I think like naturally big lips are beautiful but i think you can always tell when someone has done something to their lips and so far yeah i'm just not a fan but who knows maybe by next year i'll be like i'm in you guys i got lip lip injections today is not the day another trend that we're seeing a lot of is um copycat brands or like copycat launches let's talk about dupes and i'm talking actual dupes like actual copycat products not products that we as the beauty community are like i swear this is a dupe for that thing no i'm talking about elf <laughs> and charlotte tilbury specifically now you know it's, it's always been a thing for drugstore products to try to mimic in a way higher end products so that they can sort of cash in on that cachet or around the virality virality around whatever product is really popular at sephora at the moment right like that that is not a new thing but i feel like brands are doing this even more explicitly now and none more so than elf with their duping of the halo glow foundation serum type products and the halo wand which are like the you know pillow talk wand i'll pop some pictures here but i'm sure you know what i'm talking about now i feel like elf has been roasted for this behavior i don't personally care like i'm, I'm not offended by a drugstore brand duping a high-end brand but i am surprised like i'm i'm surprised that this is even allowed that Charlotte Tilbury isn't taking legal action against Elf for literally copying their products. I don't know what the laws are around, you know, one makeup company and copying another and how do you prove and all that, but like th there's there's no denying that these were copied products, right? So I'm just wondering what where the line is like is it that as long as one company isn't using the exact same name of a product as another then anything else goes i'm i'm curious like i'm sure that there has been a time when one makeup company has sued another for these types of practices and maybe now companies just know the best ways around that or how to avoid that kind of thing by really tiptoeing along that line because if this isn't a problem and if elf doesn't get into any actual legal trouble i think that we will see this continue because the elf products have been incredibly popular like they've been really successful with this duping right and so if there's no issue why would they not continue i think we will see elf doing this same practice and i think we will see other brands catching on and trying it as well because they're seeing that you know they'll they'll be able to make a lot of profit from this kind of behavior and they won't see any downsides so that is really interesting and i, I honestly think it is probably a good thing for these really high-end products to at least a different version of them to be more accessible to a more general public but you know maybe we are sort of reaching a line and i, I do want to know where that line is i think that for the most part like these are two different audiences not entirely there's probably some crossover a lot of people do buy both drugstore and high-end but i think the people who buy the pillow talk ones are not necessarily 
it's not gonna be a complete overlap with the people who buy the elf halo glow wands. But at the same time, how do you measure that? I don't know. I guess I have a lot of questions around like how the industry works. But another thing that I've noticed a lot of that I would think would be a problem in legal terms is all of the collaborations that are allowed around one particular piece of IP. So I'm thinking specifically of The Little Mermaid because it's got to be coming out very soon now. I've been seeing so many collabs for it, like at least four. I just saw one this morning with Kiko. I've seen one with Ulta. Is this just the Ulta brand? There was one with, I think, the Black Girl Sunscreen. Oh, Pacifica. So that's at least four right there. And again, like I don't personally have a problem. It doesn't impact me how many brands do a collab with Little Mermaid, but I'm just confused about how this is allowed. Was Disney just like, okay, any, any brands who are interested in doing collabs, please come forward. We will sign off on all of you. We will do all of these. Because in the past, whenever there's been some kind of collaboration, whether I remember there was one that was Game of Thrones with Urban Decay, there was Hunger Games with China Glaze, was that the nail polish brand? I did get some of those. There's always just been one. It's never been like four or five or more different companies collaborating on, on one particular thing. So is it that the laws changed or just that more companies are now realizing the value of a collaboration with a popular piece of IP even if they do not have exclusivity with Disney and The Little Mermaid, even if they know that there's gonna be five other companies that are also doing collaborations. Or, you know, they're just assuming that a big Little Mermaid fan is going to buy the sunscreen, buy the blushes from Kiko, buy the skincare from Pacifica. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what it is, that these are all like, there's one skincare, there's one sunscreen, there's one makeup. What was the fifth one? But I feel like there's more, you know, there's got to be like multiple and the Ulta one, that's like a little bit of everything. I don't know. I, I, I am confused about that. Whenever I s was seeing a Little Mermaid collaboration, I was like, another one? Like, how, how is this okay? If this is successful these, for these brands, I guess this is what we'll be seeing in the future. You know, the next, what's the next Disney one? Like Snow White, I guess we'll see like... 10 makeup and skincare collaborations for Snow White and whatever else, Bridgerton, you know, every single thing that comes out that is super popular, brands are gonna cash in on it. I don't necessarily think that this is a good thing. I mean, it's good for the fans who like can get more merch. That's basically what it is. It's merch for these things that they're a fan of. But at some point, like it's, isn't it just a bit much? I'm realizing while editing this that my discussion was more around like the legality and the intellectual property rights rather than talking about like why you shouldn't buy these products or my issue with these collaborations. And I think some of these collaborations didn't work and that's something that I did not mention. Like on the post about the Kiko collaboration, a lot of people were commenting like Kiko has notoriously not been very inclusive with their shade ranges so it doesn't really make sense to collaborate with The Little Mermaid because it is a black actress playing The Little Mermaid. I think it would make a lot more sense for black owned brands to collaborate. For example, like Black Girl Sunscreen, that makes a ton of sense. And something like Pat McGrath or LYS, Fenty, like these would make sense. The other ones, not as much. But anyways, there's a lot more things I wanted to talk about. I don't know how long it would take me to get through all of these, but I'm just gonna mention these Tarte Cosmetics lip products. These are the new Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump Shift pH Adjusting Lip Plump Trio. Oh my God, can these companies stop it with these names? This is ridiculous. When I look at these, I think of products that I had when I was like a preteen, like grades, eight to 11, just the look of these reminds me of those, I think like Bonnie Bell products. And I'm like, no, big turn off. I don't want these. This does not look good to me. You remember those little click up products? Oh, I hated those. And I feel like I, yeah, I, I still don't want products like that because it just gives me flashbacks to that kind of makeup. But also when I look at the pictures of the, of the models, like they include the lips here, a, that doesn't look good. <laughs> like, I would not want my lips to look like that. It, it's just like so over the top and like 
But yeah, I feel like they just did not do a good job with the marketing, at least not for my preferences. But that is it for today's video. Let me know if you like this anti-haul and if you'd prefer for me to talk about like very specific launches or more talk about the industry as a whole, which I feel like is what I did here. I would love to hear your thoughts on these products. And if you have bought any of these, if you were turned off in the ways that I was, or if maybe I brought some new criticism that you hadn't considered that will help you to not buy these products, I would love to hear that. But let's talk about a book that I have been reading lately. Oh, and first I do want to mention my lip combo today because I feel like I'm just looking so juicy. This is the Spark Cloud Paint. I've been wearing this non-stop. The first time I used it, it was on camera and I actually didn't like it very much, but since then it has grown me so much. I'm wearing this on my lips and all over my cheeks, just a ton of blush as you can tell. And I'm now liking cream blush better than powder blush. I don't know who I am. I am so sorry, but that's what's happening right now. Maybe it's just a phase. And then I wore it with this Annabelle lip liner, which my friend decluttered to me. And I was actually going to declutter again myself but i love the way it looks with this so i don't know what do you guys think should i keep it even though these colors do not go together i feel like it looks nice on the lips but anyways this is hannah witten's for the wolf this is very long this is like 500 pages so the first 350 pages of this were dull <laughs> at a couple points i thought i was going to put it down and then after 350 pages, it finally picked up. I was reading it last night and I couldn't put it down. And I was like, what? Why did the author make so many people probably stop reading this book because of how boring it was at the beginning just to pick things up like literally in the last quarter or last fifth? It made no sense to me. Yeah, I don't like this very much. I was gonna give it a two stars now because it got more exciting. I'm probably gonna give it a three, it's more like 2.5. I really don't like the writing style. It is just so over the top and it's like a romance between this young woman and a wolf who's actually human, but not really human. And like every single time, just as an example, she like looks at him, it's like, you could see the tension in his shoulders as he held the world together with his frame. Like that's every single sentence is like that. And I was like, oh my God, give it a break. <laughs> I do not like this kind of writing. This book could have been 120 pages shorter if it wasn't written like that. Maybe I should try to find pain laced Eamon's features. The ragged hem of his shirt showed a stripe of blood muddied skin. He opened his mouth, closed it again, throat working an empty swallow. Red, with nothing to feed into the waiting silence, just pressed her lips together. Like that kind of thing. I was like, oh my God, this is so dram melodramatic. And it is like a YA book. So I guess that's why, and that's probably part of the reason why I don't read YA anymore. Cause I just find it so over the top. It's kind of like a Red Riding Hood story, but with a bit of a twist on it, the woods itself is kind of one of the characters. And that's about as much as I'm gonna go into. If this looks like your jam, if that kind of romance is fun for you, then maybe you would like it. But I think, yeah, I think I regret reading this cause it's taken so long. This has been like almost a month. And usually a book this size would take me maybe two weeks, two and a half weeks. It's just, ugh, it's been a slog, honestly, and I cannot wait to move on to my next book. So that's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you next week. Bye.